Hi everybody, I'm Roy Firestone and this is our weekly show on Facebook and YouTube live. The legendary Kareem Abdul-Jabbar recently spoke out loudly and forcefully against the pervasive anti-Semitism in Hollywood and professional sports. His condemnation, though refreshing, isn't really surprising. You might say he kind of runs in the family. Because on April 11th, 1945, the American Third Army smashed through the gates of the infamous concentration camp known as Buchenwald. The horrors of what they found there shocked soldier and general alike. General Eisenhower, knowing that one day there would be those who would attempt to deny the horrors ever took place, made the local German population participate in the burial of thousands of murdered men, women, and children whose bodies lay exposed throughout the camp. Now, one of those American liberators was a guy named Ferdinand L. Alcindor. As a black man, he knew personally the experience of discrimination and hate, and he was profoundly moved. And he saw a little Jewish boy standing between the survivors, and he hoisted him up and held him high above the heads of the Germans standing there and said, look at this sweet little kid. He isn't even eight yet. This was your enemy? He threatened the Third Reich. He's the one against whom you waged war and murdered millions like him. Well, Ferdinand never forgot what he witnessed. On his deathbed, he asked his son to travel to Israel and track down that little boy he had hoisted above his strong shoulders all those years ago, a promise his son would keep in the year 2011. Ferdinand's son was born Ferdinand Louis Alcindor Jr., you know him as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, that little Jewish boy who survived Buchenwald would grow up to become the chief rabbi of Israel. His name is Rabbi Yisrael Meir Lau. And Kareem wrote this book, Brothers in Arms, the epic story of the 761st Tank Battalion, World War II's Forgotten Heroes. His father would have been proud. Here's another one. In 1946, a full year before Jackie Robinson broke the color line and helped alter the nature of the civil rights movement, a lauded professor of physics was asked to speak to black students at a school called Lincoln University in Pennsylvania, a very small school. Lincoln was the first university to grant college degrees to blacks, and Lincoln was also the alma mater for the poet Langston Hughes and the eventual Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall. Now, this professor's lecture had very little to do with physics, but it did, in a way, have to do with inertia and the laws of human attraction. The professor talked about the nature of racism in humanity, and he said, racism is a virus. I don't intend to stay quiet about this either. He then talked about his longtime friendships and relationships with black scientists and inventors, and there was no mainstream media coverage of this lecture by the professor even though almost anything the professor said publicly was usually covered by the press since he came to America in 1933 and became a U.S. citizen in the year 1940. For his lecture, Lincoln University bestowed an honorary degree from Lincoln University. The lecture was prominently featured in black publications but completely ignored by mainstream white reporting. Well, this professor knew a lot about racism and the disease of hate and racial purity because he fled Nazi Germany when Hitler came to power and took asylum in the United States. That professor's name, Albert Einstein. Two interesting stories about the nature of racism and hate by two people who were very outspoken about that in their times. Albert Einstein and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That's our show for this week. We'll see you next week, everybody.